All right, hello and welcome back to the Binge Boys Podcast. This week we're here to talk to you about Cowboy Bebop, but not the animated series. We're talking about the Netflix live action show that varies in quality depending on your sanity. (laughs) But before we get into live action Cowboy Bebop, we must introduce ourselves. And with you today, my name is Enrique. What's going on? It's Eli back again this week. Hello, friends. It's Tristan. I'm still here. And we are the Bingai Bungai, the Binge Boys as a collective. Now, gentlemen, we just got just done watching. Gentlemen? What? Just gentlemen? I or are you talking gentlemen. to us? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Oh, you know, all right. <laughs> you go for it. This dude's on crack. Yeah, I am on crack. <laughs> now, Speaking gentlemen, snack pack. we watched the animated series, <coughs> but two weeks ago, just two weeks, Fresh in our heads. We know the characters. We know the names. We just know the plot. So we come here. It's hard not to compare both series. Yeah. So if you want yeah. us to be completely impartial, we're not. But we're going to have some an- analysis for you guys about why it's a bad show, too. <laughs> not just <laughs> yeah. a bad adaptation. Yeah. I hated it. Because there's no such thing as this being a good show. No. No, it's not even close to a good it's show. It's not no, a we'll good TV show, and you're a liar if you say it is. Yes. As a standalone, it wouldn't be good. Dude, it's yeah, no cliche, yep. overplayed, and boring. You could not watch the anime and hate this just as much as I did. So, let's start it off. Spike, John Cho. Didn't like John Cho Spike. Really? I actually, that was one of the things I didn't mind, and I can get hated, criticized, whatever. I actually did not mind the actor playing him. Tristan, thought. Okay, there were, there were parts of what he did that I enjoyed, and then there were other parts that I didn't enjoy. One of the things I enjoyed most about him, one of the few things I enjoyed about him as Spike was that I think he did a good job with kind of the snarky, kind of say whatever uh, attitude that Spike sometimes has where he'll just snap at you, uh, say something just quick-witted, whatever, and, and try and get at you. I mean, that's part of the script too, though. Like that's it, not, it is. That's not necessarily the actor, but I, I would say my favorite part of the – that actor, it sounds stupid, but just in the uh, the intro song, you know, like bam, 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 I was like, oh shit! And the the, the dude, like how they kind of went back and forth between like the animated to like the actual live action. Like I thought that was pretty cool, and like that for some reason it made me like that actor as him. So, <laughs> I actually felt like the writing for Spike was the worst part, but John Cho to me, he seemed. He didn't seem charismatic. He seemed bored as Spike. I could I see it. I, I could see that. it, yeah. Like, that's yeah. my issue, is that every time he was on there, he was like, hey, what's up, Jet? Hey, Spike. I'm going to go eat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no, I like what's see going it. on, dude? Well, yeah, because there's a difference in comparison, of course. In the original, Spike was... Oh, here we go. Here we go. They're already. typing. Listen here, man. They're two <laughs> different things, bro. You can't compare the original to the live action. That's not fair, man. Hey, if you're going to add something, you got to at least oh have you know similarities. The characters got to be similar, right? This wasn't the same. In the anime, Spike was just laid back, relaxed, kind of go with the flow as a whole. John Cho as Spike didn't feel as relaxed, go with the flow it just, like you said, he. it seemed like he was bored. Like, he just, it seemed like he didn't care, but not in the same way that Spike did. Spike just kind of had a nonchalant attitude about everything. John Cho seemed like he actually didn't really care about the character as much. This Spike seemed like a dickhead, and I never yeah. got Spike was a dick in the other one. I just got he was a sarcastic dude. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, now that you point that out, especially the boredom part, I can definitely see that. Um, as far as being a dick, like I don't know. I felt like there was times in this season. I I hope this is all they're gonna do. Um, that <laughs> <laughs> you never know, man. Spoiler alert, people! There's a season two. Oh, if you couldn't fuck. tell. <clears throat> um, yeah. So anyway, um, I f- I felt like there was points where he definitely like could be seen as like a dickhead but for the most part like i didn't really get that vibe too much speaking of real fast as a whole one of my biggest issues with this show if we're comparing of course 
is that in the original, it felt like a lot of different characters just had a certain type of swagger about them. Like That's they were a just fact. Mm-hmm. Suave or swaggy. They just carried themselves in a certain manner that just had me super hyped at almost everything they did because I was like, "That's so cool!" Like he's so cool, you know. There were very few characters that had any sort of similar traits. I'm gonna you do know? you one better and say there was none. I disagree. Really? I, I do as well. I do. I think there was one well, guy here okay. yeah, that no, was the right. standout and the best performance possible. You're right. No, and I that's the next that. character I want to talk about. Jet. Mustafa Shakir. Yes. Jet Black. Yes. No, Thank I you. I'm that. glad My we're man, on the same page. You yes. fucking killed that. They gave yes. you nothing to work with. They gave him nothing. No. They turned Jet into a disgruntled, deadbeat father. Yes. And for whatever reason. I don't understand <laughs> yeah, that decision. That makes no sense. Other than probably he's African American, and I'm, I hate yeah. to say that, but damn it, that script was literally just Jet being stereotypical black, angry black man. That's the yeah. craziest part. Hey man, that's they took what I like. Jet, <laughs> who was very chill and very cool, and turned him to angry black man Samuel Jackson lookalike number four. That's bullshit. They shouldn't have done that. But it was terrible. Yeah, no, I agree. Mustafa Shakir with that material created a fantastic Jet. He sounded nearly he identical. Uh, that was, was one thing, for sure. He was charismatic as hell. Yes. And if you made him white, he would look exactly like Jet. Exactly. I know. That's one of my things, too. Like, it was I, I was just kind of great part. I was just kind of memeing on myself when, in episode one. I was like, damn, they took Jet Black a little too serious. But <laughs> they, damn, they took Black Dog too serious, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, in all, in all seriousness, like, he did an amazing job, and there's no nobody better to play that role. I, I would love to see him in new stuff after this. Uh, oh, that absolutely. dude's good. I legitimately, like, when he first came on the screen and he was talking, I thought that it was his original voice actor in the dub of Cowboy Bebop. Like, that's how similar I thought the voices were. Dude's a monster at acting. Like, we need, and he needs to get some big roles now. If anything, you saw him take a mediocre to bad show and turn it decent. Yeah, I mean nah, that's at, nah, best, at, at best. Sorry, yeah. bad, mediocre to bad writing and turn it decent with well, this character specifically. I was gonna say if we're, uh, if, we're yes. if we're done, we have a f- somebody who's fighting fucking Jet Black for that. Uh, not not so much good, but just their counterpart, and that's fucking Faye. Oh, awful, dude! Literally <laughs> the worst character in the show. Oh, in my opinion. Well, I, until uh, the last no, five I, minutes. Uh, <laughs> no, there's one worse. There's definitely one worse. But let's just yeah. like oh this. yeah, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. Daniela Pineda, Dude. who played Faye, terrible. You're probably man. a fantastic person. I yes, don't know you. I, I, I don't. You're probably not a bad actor, but my God, the material they were gave you and your performance, that was terrible. It they was, turned her yeah. into a Marvel fucking movie protagonist. Yeah, it was. That was rough, man. Yeah, that and that's really performance rough. alone. Don't even start it on writing choices. Such as deciding that Faye shall be bisexual in this. Dude. Okay. I, That's not my problem, right? Cool. You're bisexual. I, my I, problem yeah. is, is changing how her backstory gets told. Yes. They changed it Dude, from her talking to did. I'm a inanimate, well, not inanimate, but a non-speaking dog, right? So basically she's just talking to herself, re- rekindling through her memory of what's happened to her so far, right? Instead of that to where it's just, you know, you're reliving your past. She tells it to her lesbian one night stand. Yeah. Who is a mechanic. They choose to just, they try and make this most butch character that they can to make it seem more legitimate. And I'm like, I I don't get it. Like, what is the point? I heard some people say legitimately, there was an article, a title I saw this. Cowboy Bebop live action writes women better than the original. Uh And I laughed. I said, he didn't it's watch the original. St- no, it's so stereotypical, to be honest. It's it's like, it's stereotypical. They turned we'll get to Julia in a second, but they turned <laughs> Julia from a badass on her own yeah. to a damsel in distress. Yes. Yep. So and that's stupid. Yep. That's Going not back good writing. To stereotypical, yeah, exactly. This um, show is the most cliche fucking writing I've ever seen. Yes. I was say one other thing about it being a Netflix show, I was to say they just I, I understand they're different shows, whatever. But it, being a Netflix show, they have to make sure you know they have every demographic. They have you know somebody who's LGBT. They have somebody who's black, Mexican, white, Asian. You know they have to cover all their boundaries, which 
it just gets old after a while. Like, I don't care if there's no white dudes. I don't care if there's, I don't care what the racial demographics are, but just to like force include everybody in it is just getting old for me. Okay, gotta be careful by saying. I know, I, I, no, that's why the issue I, I, yeah. is not that they're there. Right, it's that no. when they are there, they are a stereotype of that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, thing. exactly. The, both being a stereotype and like them just trying to force them in there just to force them in there, you know? Like I felt like the whole like uh, bisexual one night stand thing was so forced. Like there was just it, nothing before or after that. They just kind of yeah, threw it in it there. It didn't make any so, sense. Like you wouldn't have guessed that. You wouldn't have figured that that was going to happen with Faye at any point. And then it happened, and then it was never addressed again. I know. What is the, see, the point of that? Exactly. That's my issue. Is is not that that happened. That's not my issue at all. It's that there was nothing to lead up to that, and then nothing after that. If that was part of her story, that would have been awesome. That's so cool. They can change her character completely, and I would be okay because this is a different show, and I will treat it as such. But just to like change for one little scene basically is just so weird to me well it could it, be more in season two it's shut well, up here's here's the other thing it's it. like along the lines of just throwing it in there that feels like a terrible representation of just that that view as a whole like how are you just gonna randomly say oh yeah she's bisexual and the way they tell you is just she randomly hooks up with another girl for like half an episode and there's nothing else yeah to no, get my what? tristan bag faye was always sexualized but she did it to herself to get w's right yes yeah. in the original cowboy bebop faye didn't have sex with a man or a woman no so i feel like this them doing this was like hey guys we could really use a sex scene here let's just do one <laughs> yeah that's fair and i'm like okay so I don't want to stay too long on just characters because I would love to talk about the shitty writing. I will dive into one quote that came from this lesbian scene. Wow, you're telling me you really never had an orgasm before? Oh, no, don't. No, I don't remember. Oh, you would remember if you had one. Really, dude? dude? Yeah, the writing is excellent there. (laughs) It's it's just as bad if, like, after, like, a sex scene with a dude and a chick, she's like, wow, you have such a big cock. (laughs) It's just like why it's so pointless. Like that, <laughs> that didn't play so a factor pointless. into anything. It wasn't funny. No. I didn't laugh. I don't. I don't know think anyone was, laughed at that. I don't. I don't know <laughs> who that was for. Um, but yeah. No, the, no, no. That uh, actually, to? that was for the middle-aged moms that are like, oh yeah, you know, she's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, men suck at sex. Oh hell yeah, you're damn right. We do, but we yeah, already know. That's damn right. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> let's make this a combo oh package. Let's let's get the McDonald's Big Mac deal. Oh okay. no, Julia and Vicious. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> what a wombo don't go. Combo. I don't want to get into the ending, so don't talk about that part. I'm not gonna talk ju- about the ending of Julia, but oh. the Julia, whole of Julia. Wow, the wow. writing for Julia was bad. The acting for Julia was stereotypical. Yes. Okay, I didn't think. Okay, I didn't think that the acting overall was bad i i think it really was mostly just the writing for for julia's character i'd agree i don't think the actress really had a lot of directions to go there (laughs) did anybody (laughs) like someone's getting there is a bad actor here and i'm sorry but they're getting fucking flamed in this combo deal that's for damn sure is it vicious yes fucking i'm sorry Alex Hassel, <laughs> vicious. I watched trans. We re- we saw the boys. We reviewed yes, the boys yes. both seasons. Yes, we liked the boys. We didn't say anything bad about Translucent. Who the fuck thought it was smart to hire this guy as a fucking main villain? I he looks know. like goddamn Lord Farquaad. <laughs> he looks like Lucius Malfoy. No, he yes, looks like I Lord so Farquaad. Too. I thought well, so I literally too, the whole That's time I, I was like, they replaced this badass dude, vicious, who. Has, like, some mystery to him. You know, what's going on with Vicious? Why is he like this? And they gave us fucking Lucius Malfoy, who's just angry all the time and, like, spits on people when he talks (laughs) and stuff like that. Yes. And he's, oh, my gosh, I was pissed. It sucked so bad. I didn't (laughs) need that. 
for he a villain. Genuinely, I think he read the script and said, <laughs> "Guys, really, this is what you got for me." And they said, "Yeah, read it." And he said, "Okay." He just phoned it in because he was not this bad in the boys. No, like, he, he played. No, he was pretty good. So. This was terrible. Absolutely terrible. They turned him into a sniveling loser. Not once was like, man, I'm really scared of this guy. Or, man, I think this guy can go toe-to-toe with Spike. No, I thought this dude is a fucking dweeb who's going to get his shit pushed in when they fight. I was going to say, to add to it, too, they made him incompetent when uh, him and uh, Jet were, you know, going on missions together. Like, Jet had to hold his hand the whole time. Like, that's not what, I don't know, that's not what Vicious should be. Jet? Spike? Spike, not Jet, sorry. I don't know why I said Jet. Yeah. Oh yeah, when they did the the murder thing. Yeah. Yes. When they like, were, the forgot about that. Out of control. Oh lord. Yes. Stuff. The the fucking writing on that man was great, dude. <laughs> oh yeah. How do you shave your nuts, son? <laughs> what? Oh my god, dude, that was ridiculous. <laughs> what are we doing right now, dude? This show sucks. This I is not don't... good TV, man. Why would you put a razor down. down there? I don't want a razor on my nuts. That's awesome, dude. I'm not watching an infomercial on fucking <laughs> insert brand here that we're not sponsored by. This is Riverdale <laughs> riding, man. <laughs> what the hell? Not to mention that they just destroyed the whole Julia Spike storyline <laughs> yeah, they, they just give it to you like yeah uh, they give it to you right away here yeah. do you understand do you understand that, that they love each other <laughs> they love each other do you understand it. do you understand that she doesn't love vicious do you understand <laughs> <laughs> not to mention that they went from like spike caring about julia and always wanting to get back to her and julia's just kind of stuck where she is to this was how it was always going to be, and Spike has like just a full-on fever dream about Julia. That's how they treated it for the majority of the show until we got that shitty flashback episode. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to yeah. the narrative choices later. I actually want to give... I have... Okay, this, I could be completely in a different point of view than you guys. Different feel. Oh, okay. I'm here to defend someone who didn't get any screen time at all and has caught a lot of fucking flack. Uh oh, and that is Ed, the Ed mm. actress, actor, mm. actress. I don't know. Hear me out. We watched the original Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. Tell me that that performance is not exactly what Ed is. I mean, I. Yes. I don't know. It, I it, guess it, I I can't I can't say is. that she did a bad job or he. You're you're definitely uh, right. I just didn't like it. That's what personally. Ed is. Uh, we didn't get it much, which was good. That's my issue, right? They fucking sent them out to die. There was no way in two minutes, especially the way that that last episode went, there was no way anyone was going to hold the Ed person in a good regard at that yeah. ending. No, that's true as well. But I don't know. They had I had no chance to survive. I just, I got the vibes that Tristan got originally, which was just annoying. Like, I just get off my screen. But that's on the writing, though. That's exactly okay. how Ed acts, right? Is that's a, a rambunctious good, and annoying, yeah. Yeah, that's a good adaptation. The issue is you didn't give them time to do any of the things that Ed makes Ed likable. There's no mushroom yeah, episode. That's true. There's no fucking yeah. fun hacking. It's literally true. just, I'm in your face yelling, calling you, Spike! Like, what? Yeah. Come on, you didn't give him a chance to survive. Spike Spiegel! I'm like, oh my dear goodness. That's that's Spigal. absolutely on Netflix, and if any harassment comes to that actor or actress, you guys are dumb fucks for doing that, fans for harassing that person, because they didn't make this. They just no. wanted a job. Yeah. Two, blame Netflix if anyone. Go fucking shit on Netflix for ruining yes, that person, please. and that actor should go tell Netflix, you owe me a bigger fucking check now. <laughs> yeah. See, that's the thing, too, is, like, when normal people are, you know, just watching the show and are, you know, breaking it down to the extent that we are, a lot of just actors and actresses get shit on. And for the most part, it's the writers and the studio, Netflix, that's, you know, distributing it. Faceless, yeah, so they can never exactly. get in trouble for it. It's can you name the writers the of this? Because I can't. No, exactly. They're hiding. They're hiding exactly. in the back while these actors and actresses eat the damage. They should have a bonus on their fucking contract that says, if I receive X amount of death threats on Twitter, you owe me X thousand more dollars. <laughs> That's facts. <laughs> that yeah. would be so dope. It's just, I, I feel like the writers just never catch flack for anything. Like, that's why no, I say the writers. Sure. That's why I say the writers is because I don't know their names. And that's just it's stupid, man. 
They should show visuals of after every single show ever produced of what the writers fucking look like, so I could just, give them uh, some shit too. Yeah, I, that's that's what I was gonna say. Okay, narrative, narrative, narrative decisions and narrative enjoyment. Jet and the child arc, mm. bad. Agree? Yeah. No, yes. Agree. Agree. Cliche. Agree. Oh yes. Yes. Pointless. Stru- agree. Agree. <laughs> Very well. Technically, it uh, wasn't pointless okay. with the plot line they were going how, for. How easy could they have just You're not right. done that, though? Very easily. Oh, very easily. But that's the thing is they they wanted to include it in their plot line and their narrative that they did. Therefore, I think it was necessary to what they ended up doing. Uh, did I like it? And do I think that they should have gone somewhere else? Yes. Not okay. I did not like it, but they should have gone somewhere else. I will that's make I one note about the child arc. It provided me personally with one bit of entertainment and that was in the episode where jet is watching his daughter's recital and so mm. he's on like the virtual thing <laughs> yep and john and keeps getting cutting, ass beat. <laughs> yeah it just keeps cutting back to him in you know the saloon or whatever it is and spike is in the background just getting his ass beat that was okay i i, I didn't laugh but i was like that's pretty funny i mean it's it's again it's kind of cliche a little bit but it's one of those it's that's the kind of thing that I enjoy sometimes. And so they did the right thing for that, in my opinion. OK. For now, because we're talking about narrative, let's try our hardest not to compare it to the anime for those fucking people out there. that are like, don't do that. Mm-hmm. OK, we won't. We'll tell you why it's bad in general. The spike and the syndicate stuff. Oh, yeah, that wasn't entertaining at all. No, it wasn't interesting. And I didn't think any of those people came out cool. The syndicate didn't seem cool. They seemed like generic no. mafia number two. Yeah. Yes. No, literally. Like, I was never scared. Like, I, I get it. Like, you're just a viewer or whatever. But you should be scared by an ultimate power like the syndicate, like, as a viewer. And I just never really felt that power. Like, I don't know. I never felt like Spike was in danger. No. Because as we find out, he never was. Yeah. yeah I mean, don't get me fucking started. They just kind of show up, you know? Like, it never felt like they really controlled situations, but there were situations throughout, including in episode one, where, like, with the red eye, and they showed up to handle that business or whatever, it it didn't feel like they were in control or, like, handling something they needed to handle. It just felt like a small little issue, you know? It didn't, I don't even know how to describe it the best way, it didn't feel like they were imposing their will. That's that's how I should put it. It didn't feel like they were imposing their will over it. It felt like they were just taking care of something real fast. We never heard about what the syndicate did. Mm-mm. We never heard what they do. No. Why should I be scared of this organization when I don't know anything about them? They don't yeah. say what they do. They don't say what they make money from. They don't say how they run things. They just say, you know, you get Jet's partner. He goes, yeah, I got paid by the syndicate to be an inside man. For what? Don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the syndicate d- deals in red eye. To who? Don't know. <laughs> it's like, what's the what's the real danger here with the syndicate? I don't feel scared for anyone. You know, uh, a big thing at the end is Spike's like, yeah, I'm going to go handle this forehead. Like, and you're supposed to be like, no, don't go, Spike. You're going to be in danger against those guys in black suits with red ties. Yeah. <laughs> The, the syndicate if you even remember the name throughout this honestly not very memorable i mean unless you've seen the original i mean yeah and don't get me started with vicious being the son of one of the big bosses on that oh, and then making him oh god the yeah. classic cla- i don't know why hollywood loves this role so much classic daddy's boy rich kid yep. spoiled arc dude every single show for the and most then his part. dad just shits on him the classic classic yeah Oh, I can never live up to my father's expectations arc. Yep. Yeah. And then he always loves your best friend more than you. <laughs> yeah. Because, yep. by God, the dad was only on screen for five minutes, but he made sure to let him know that Fearless was always better than you. And that's one other thing we haven't talked about. Spike's second name. In the original... Suck. I'm sorry. I did it. I did it. In the original, Spike didn't have a second name, right? Right. He was always Spike. Cool. Fuck. Fuck. It doesn't matter. Fearless is not a cool name. No. It's fucking lame. 
and it's 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 boring exposition. Man, I, yeah. hey guys, we gotta show that this character can do anything. He'll do anything. He's not scared to do anything. What should we call him? Fearless. How, how about I, fearless? I so think... if he's fearless, how the fuck is vicious? Vicious. Yes, that that is a good point. I don't know. I think it's good as far as a counteract to vicious, uh, but just to have that nickname was a little bit weird for me. You know, uh, you know what would have been good if they kept the fearless thing? Not to cut you off. We, on that flashback episode, when he goes to fucking murder all those motherfuckers for vicious, he cut and he takes them all out dolo. He should have earned the title Spike the Fearless. And when you speak about him and they mention him and like they start talking about him, they go, yeah, no one's seen Spike the Fearless in years. That would have been dope. Yeah. No, that works. And then they mention how he got the name, and it's that scene. That's decent writing. Yeah. No, I agree. And then, uh, yeah, sometime either earlier or later, they go into Vicious as well. Because, I mean, you can't explain one nickname and then not the other, you know? Exactly. Vicious is not Vicious. <laughs> I didn't see him do one no. thing where I was like, damn, well, they, that motherfucker's they, a beast. <laughs> they tried to by having him curb stomp some dude. Uh, he curb stomped a poor dude that he jumped while he was drunk. Ooh, so scary. <laughs> yep. Ah, oh, come on, man. I don't know, man. I never, yeah. I was never scared of Vicious, man. Um, Lucius really Malfoy th- does not worry me. Yeah, so I don't really have much more, like, narrative-wise, other than, like, some shitty moments here and there. I would like to I say, have... I had one episode I liked a lot. Oh, okay. Episode 8. The Periot dude. The... The Mad Parrot or whatever. Ah, yeah, the clown? Yeah, yeah. The, the dude afraid of the dogs. Okay, work with me on this one. Mm-hmm. That, was, gonna... that showed the most potential in anything. The first really? fucking five minutes of that, with when they're showing him, I was like, this is pretty cool. And then they kept doing the dog thing, and they kept doing the dog thing, and yeah. they kept doing the dog thing. Yep. If they didn't do that dog bit and actually gave Spike a challenging person to fight, that episode was great. Because like him fighting Spike, whatever, great. That dude just being a creepy bastard, great. It's just the dog thing. I think that's the episode that showed the most, like, potential. I could see that, yeah. I just, yeah, like, the dog thing was just okay. overused, man. I mean, it was, what, four times that they, or three times they escaped. And just that's how that. they won. Yeah. So, yeah, that part's kind of silly. Did you guys have a favorite episode at all? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, 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 I was going to say, I know there's got to be a... I don't. I want to say diamond in the rough, but there's no diamonds. Uh, but I just don't. I I don't have a favorite. Like it's like picking shit from shit, you know. Oh, we we can we at least say what you said in the group chat before we start. We you know when you first okay, started. Yeah, you go for it. The first couple weren't terrible. They were just no. meh it, to me. To me, they were just kind of meh. I was to like, me you too. know what? I thought they were okay. meh as well. Yeah, I, I immediately was... did not like this. Like it that's just, totally granted, fair. It's probably because I was comparing too much to the original you know um but it was uh, for me it was tough from the beginning just due to comparisons but man the deeper you got into this show the more they started to show their hand i i was texting you guys i said by episode five i was like i think there's a season two and you guys were like no there's no way i was like they they haven't paid it off spoiler alert if you haven't seen the anime skip ahead about 30 seconds they haven't <laughs> paid off for spike to die yet right there would oh. so it wouldn't be satisfying at all <sighs> dude so that's how i knew a season two was coming i was gonna say that uh, back to this season just being shit as they capped it off with that last episode so oh. i was gonna say my worst my least favorite episode was nine until i got to ten <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i'd agree with that I so mean, I, I don't know honestly episode which one was it Episode six was pretty bad. Uh, was that, is that one? the mother one? Uh, no, it was the one right before it. It was the one with the mechanic, and also where oh. where uh, Spike was just stuck in the virtual thing. The I don't want to talk about that oh, one because I'm just gonna pair it to the original. I, that one we, was bad, that, man. That just quick. That was the episode when we reviewed the last one. We all loved. We were like, man, that's great. If they did it to Mott today and just mm-hmm. did it with social media, that episode would be perfect. That'd be a great. And yeah. then they said, let's not do anything. No, let's and not. And just make this fucking random fucking AI. And I was like, okay. So, fuck that episode. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> um, 
<sighs> ten. Nine. Ten. Yeah, both. Terrible. Yeah. So, oh, man. Ten. They tried to... <laughs> They tried to do the anime th- fight with Spike and Vicious, right? Oh, God. It wasn't built up or earned because Vicious no. didn't come across as a threat. Correct. So that's the tension's gone because Vicious never came across as a threat. Then they decided we're going to ramp this up to 12 in dog shit. I don't understand where, how, why they decided to turn Julia heel. Dude. It was oh. so fucking random. <laughs> what? No, no what the hell? Up, no foreshadow. No. Nothing. 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 Just randomly, when Spike's about to get the W, she shoots Vicious. Well, I guess Spike was about to lose, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But shoots she's vicious. ready to run off with him right before this. Yeah. And you. now she says, we can take over the syndicate. And I'm like, you can what now? <laughs> what? Dude. Literally, that was... What was my note? <laughs> I said, Julia, what? <laughs> I paused this, got up, and went and did something else for about an hour <laughs> before I finished that last 15 minutes. That's probably a good thing. I was like, nah, bro, we ain't doing this tonight. Because I had watched five episodes in a row. Uh, that rude. whole back half, I watched. Dude, rude. how is your IQ still intact? What is the point? Like, what? Why? What is that supposed to set up is, is part of my problem. Okay. What are we setting up here? For season two that we're going to have to deal with. Um, is it going to be Julia trying to run the syndicate and get Spike to run it with her the whole time? And then it's going to be like them fighting the syndicate and they're supposed to build up the syndicate more now. But with Julia running it, even though, again, with the comparisons, I kind of hate to do it, but also not. Um, in the original Julia was actually kind of like associated with the syndicate and everything and not just Spike and Vicious. In this, she has no association with the syndicate, simply with Spike and Vicious who are in the syndicate. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's true. There, it, it, it doesn't, nothing fits together. Not at all, ever. It's like trying to put the square block inside the circle <laughs> exactly. hole. Exactly, yes. What are you doing? Um... My thoughts on it, I didn't know there was a season two up until like 20 minutes ago when we just said it. Well, uh, you didn't I, think they were going to make a second one? Dude, I hoped they wouldn't, to be honest. I thought they were just going to kind of end it there and then be good. Like, No way. You you thought that there weren't going to do more? I don't know that they'd have the budget for Who's going to watch season two? Oh, Who is going to watch that? Eli. I think no, we've determined long ago that Netflix is terrible with what they give money to. That's that's facts. If but they dude, cared, we'd get a Teenage Bounty Hunter season two. That, that that's fair. Yeah, but dude, I just don't understand how any anybody watches the season one. Goes, you know what? Season two's on the way. I can't wait. Like, I just it, it doesn't seem logical. But anyway, and if you want to come try and tell us that you're excited for season two, we'll we'll fight you over it. Yeah, you're a yeah, liar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no. Anyway, I didn't know that there was a season two. So when I saw Julia shoot Jet, or I mean uh, Spike, I was like, dude, I, I this is how it's gonna happen. Like this is how it's gonna end. Like okay, like I just uh, that was the most anticlimactic shit. And then I see him up and moving around. I'm like, all right, dude, this is supernatural treatment. Like I'm done. <laughs> like, that's fucking bullshit, to be honest. Like, oh, he's not dead. He's never dead. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, like, we'll were, they, were they trying to foreshadow it when when he mentions that he's like, oh, I've died before? Like, Stupid. is that supposed to be some sort of foreshadowing no, that he's going to die again? No, dude, it's just terrible again? writing. Like, what well, the that, hell? They just had to take that line from the original so people would shut up, bro. Also, <laughs> now, maybe I just forgot at this point, but did Vicious live? Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes, because Julia, Julia has is, him captive. That's yeah, right. Julia's no, shooting bullets at him. Now shooting I'm... blanks. Because <sighs> she's going to torture Vicious mentally like he tortured her. What is that about? Dude, uh, do you, do we even know? Like, I, I, it's not, it, I don't know that it's going to matter. I promise you. Okay, I can't promise you that Reek's not going to put it on, but we're I not can watching promise season you, two. We're not watching season two. Okay, thank God, because I'm not watching this shit, man. I'm done. No, I can't. I can't watch more. There was yeah. a point where I was planning to not finish this season and just show up today. 
<laughs> Dude, like I said, I was thinking about not watching that last episode. I it would have been not. a great bit. It would have been yeah. a great bit. Hey, just Tristan, not to laugh, watch happened? it, and just show up, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I couldn't disrespect everyone like that, so I had to finish yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's fair. <laughs> Suddenly, I'm the only one who's seen the whole thing. I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah. whoa. Yes. Dude. Well, you see, they did this. Dude, it's they hard, dude. In the, in the middle, man, I it was just background noise, I'm going to be honest, man. No, like, same. I I don't know what happened half the time because I was just done, dude. Like my brain literally could not take anymore. And we yeah, close not out. To mention, oh, sorry, no, go for it. Oh, I was gonna say not to mention they uh they changed phase past even more by like bringing her mother into it. No, dude. Oh. No, her, no, it's, but it wasn't her mother though. No, 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 not no, no. A real I know mom. what you're saying, but that that's but, why I said it. Like I said, I tried to put some air quotes on it. Air with quotes, my, yeah. With my voice, but you know, uh. I, I, I just, uh, uh, I don't know. There was very few moments from the show that I appreciated. Half of them had to do with music. Music was That's fine, fair. but it Man, wasn't as was iconic right. because I feel like they didn't play no. it as much. No, no. But there was there was one moment, and it was in episode four, where and it wasn't even because you remember how in the original Gren was like a saxophone player, and that was Tristan, the deal. How about you stop comparing it to the original, okay? <laughs> you know. Um... <laughs> But there, there was nothing like that in this one. There was no buddy who did music, so that's fine. Well, Julia sang, but whatever. Um, but there was a moment where they're playing some music, and just there was this growl on the saxophone. And as a saxophone player uh, for years, I coomered a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it was, uh, it was very satisfying for me to hear that. It drowned out the uh, terribleness of what I was actually watching. Um, so that made me happy. That's yes. fair. You know what made me drown out the the season? Fucking not watching it. I'm drowning. So then they close out with Ed, and they have the audacity. I don't know if you guys paid attention to the end credits. Yes, I did. They have the fuck. First off, they had audacity to use. You're gonna carry that weight on episode yep, nine. Saw that one. Mm-hmm. What you're gonna? It was what? quoted too. It was well, quoted. The, what? what later? Yeah, it was by Faye, but you know I yes. just ignored it. Uh, why would they do that when there's no weight to carry? Spike's not. Yeah, what the fuck? You know, Spike, Spike's a living. You know, yeah. And so they. Why would you use? You're gonna carry that weight. That's a finale thing. You know. Okay. Yep. And so then on the season ender, they use the end line. They use "We'll see you somewhere, sometime, space cowgirl." I'm like, that's not how that's supposed to be used. No. no. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, man. You know? It is. That was just a great. Is. It was a great way to end this steaming pile of dog shit. Yeah. I just, I don't understand how people like this. Nope. So we pretty much broke everything down. Y'all get numbers now. You get a two. Yep, me too. Jet saves it from a one. Mm. I love you, Mustafa Shakir. You're my dog. Yes, me too. Yeah, two. Two is a good way to put it. And Jet, Jet is about the only saving grace. Yep, and that concludes the main segment. If you guys want to follow us on Twitter, you can find us at Binge Boys. B i n g e, b o i s on Twitter, Instagram at the binge boys. D a b i n g e b o i s. You change v to dub because we are dumb asses. We also have a TikTok at the same app as our Instagram, where we post some videos we edit together sometimes. So yeah, 